on BBC Two. It's winter, 1066 AD. Fresh from victory over the Norse at Stamford Bridge, King Harold Godwinson's mighty English army has been forced to march swiftly south to deal with yet another threat to the English throne. This time, William of Normandy's powerful invasion force is camped on the Sussex coast at Hastings, intent on winning England's crown. The stakes could not be higher. Attempting to change the course of history this week, a team of mental health workers from Wales, watched over as ever by our military experts on Time Commanders. Welcome to the show that gives you the chance to test your mettle against history's greatest generals. With us today are a team of mental health workers from Bridge End in Wales. First up, Dr Andrew Metters, a consultant psychiatrist. I think on the day we're more likely to be um, four chiefs and no Indians. Um, so in a sense it doesn't matter who's a general and who's a captain. We'll all be shouting out advice to each other. Psychiatric nurse Kip Hall formerly served as a corporal in the army. I suppose it's all about power. You know, the, once, once you get that feeling that you're a, you're a general, you know, you can control all these troops and get in there, powerful, powerful hits, and win the battle. Francesca Firm is a senior occupational therapist and mother of two. I think I cope quite well under pressure. I'm usually quite level-headed. I'm not sure how I'll be after, but at the time, I'm usually quite clear thinking. And psychiatric nurse Rachel Lewis had her first baby last year. But actually quite balmy, really, you know, but... Uh... Let's just keep that between ourselves, it? Together, they are tonight's Time Commanders. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Just want to know, I mean, in your work, you must use particular skills. How do you reckon they're going to help? We're a fully multidisciplinary team. We're used to working under pressure right. in crisis situations with unpredictable clients. So does that mean you're all going to fall out or not? That's really what I want to know. Well, we do fall out, but we always make up after. So hopefully yeah. there'll be no fighting in your team. And Kip, you actually have military experience. You've worked in the military. Yeah, in the 70s I was in the uh, British Army. I spent uh, nine years in the Royal Signals. So is that going to help tonight, do you think? You better add. I, 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 <laughs> There's pressure there, I can see, Kip. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, I, he's in trouble. I, I, th I think uh, everybody's uh, saying, he, you know, Kip has done a bit of time, so he, he must know what he's doing. And I suppose we're going to find out tonight. Um, yes, because there's some pressure from that end of the table. Well, it's always fascinating to see how everybody gets on, how the dynamic works, and that's key to this. It's how you guys get on as a mm. team. So yeah. good luck. And it's time now to meet the Time Commander's experts. Keeping an eye on everything our team does tonight are historical analyst Arik Nussbacher, senior lecturer in war studies at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, and our tactical analyst, historic weapons expert and military historian Mike Lodes. Now you've got to listen very carefully because your battle briefing is next. You are going to refight the Battle of Hastings. It's the year 1066, and you're coming to the Sussex coast. An incredibly powerful invasion force landed, and they're led by the power-crazed 39-year-old Duke William of Normandy, also known as William the Bastard. William the Bastard is trying to fill the power vacuum left by the death of the old English king, Edward the Confessor. And just before this battle, your enemies, the English, have fought a battle at Stamford Bridge when another competitor for the throne tried to take it away from the English king, Harold Godwinson. That was Harold Hardrade. The cream of Harold's army, now facing William, had been with him throughout the Stamford Bridge campaign. They'd had a 200-mile force march up to meet Hardrada. They had then fought an epic, strenuous conflict and then they'd had 260 miles to get down south. Not only does William have to fight the English army 
physically to get to London, but you will have to defeat the English army in order to have some measure of control over this country. Because, Time Commanders, you will take command of William's Norman army. Now, the composition of your army is quite different to that of the English army. And the big significant difference is you have cavalry. William has got lots of cavalry. And the cavalry can be used in two ways. Mostly, they were used as mobile missile platforms. They would ride up and throw their javelins, turn away, come back, wave, pricking at the enemy. If the enemy get into disarray, then you can confidently use them as contact troops. They can draw their swords, hacking in amongst them or stabbing down. But if you try and use them as contact groups against a frontal assault on a shield wall, you could get into a lot of trouble. Yeah. You have got a big mixed bag of infantry, some very, very good, some of them a bit less well-trained. But amongst your infantry, you have got archers, and they are capable of giving you an ability to reach out to the enemy. You can use them, for instance, to disrupt enemy formations without having to get close to them yourselves. And then you can use the cavalry or some of your excellent infantry to make a hole and disrupt them further and possibly to get through their formations. But you must always have your cavalry and your infantry and your archers mutually supporting. By themselves, the archers or the cavalry or the infantry fall apart. So we've got our team playing the French under William, not yet the conqueror, against the English. Okay. This is important now. You've got your chance to ask questions of our experts. They have an enormous reservoir of knowledge of information and we're going to take it away from you. Uh, so you've got <laughs> two questions and that's it. Use them wisely. Every scrap of information could be crucial. Okay. Ask away. Our first question is, are the archers and the crossbowmen just as effective shooting over infantry or do they need direct line of sight to be effective? Crossbowmen and archers can shoot like that or like that. So you need to find a point to experiment and see where your effective range is. Okay. So where would Harold place his best troops? He would have his best troops around him. Right. Don't, William's come to take his crown. He's right. come to get his kingdom. Once he's got Harold, he kind of wears the fight for the English. So he's always going to be surrounded by his best men, but he's also going to have some best men in the front. But look for Harold and you'll find those best men, that's what they oh, say. Yeah. OK, really important thing to do now, and that's decide who will be playing as generals, who will be playing as captains. But I say decide, Eric and Mike have already done that. They look at your profiles and they decide who will be best, and it's important, because this is about how you work together as a team. So, it's time to find out who will be giving the orders and who will be carrying them out. We'd like to win but we don't mind if we win or lose. This is about make, making a good account of yourself. Andrew, you are a general. Yes. Francesca, you are a captain. And Kip, you are a general. <laughs> yeah! Good one, Kip. And Rachel? You are a captain. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we work well as a team. We all have got our responsibilities in work and we take our roles very seriously and we're able to apply ourselves to different situations. OK, so now you know who's going to be what. What do you think? Brilliant. Hi. You're all happy? <laughs> yeah. I think it'll work yeah, well. I, I yeah. Think, yeah. 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 Right, we've done a lot of preparation, a lot of talking. It's time now to see how you perform in action because it's time for your skirmish. This is a smaller fight before the main battle itself. Now, it may get gruesome. Actually, it probably will get gruesome, but it's very, very useful. It's a chance for you to test your battle skills, to test your chain of command, so use it wisely, learn from it. A mounted scouting party of yours has got itself caught well away from the main invasion force. And it's been caught by a contingent of the English army on its way to join Harold. You have got to rejoin the rest of the bastard's army. But along the way, you have an opportunity to probe the English and see how they will fight. Clear? 
Yep. Experts, thank you very much indeed. And that's the last you'll see of them. The next time you see Mike and Eric, it will all be over. The whole battle, whatever the outcome. So, what are you going to do? I would see the plan as we can't do a frontal charge. If we've got cavalry, they'll be expecting it, we'll be slaughtered. If we can split the cavalry into two groups, they ain't going to know which way to face. At least one group of cavalry can do a flank attack or a rear attack. I think that should be a plan. You're all happy? Yes, doesn't matter if you're happy or not, because that's it. Your time is up. It's been a lot of talking so far, but it's time now. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get stuck in. Let's see get going. Okay. Rachel, Fran, I need to know what troop types you've got and what you control. Kip, if you want to take an overall view, okay. use a big screen to look at the enemy. I want to know what their formation is and their location. Now, as we peer over the hill crest, we can see that the enemy's skirmish forces are all strung out in little groups. We've got the feared men there, the country infantry, and then they've got the professional soldiers of the King's Court, the Huskars. Now, the team's Norman skirmish force has got infantry, uh, some armed with bows, as well as cavalry. And the Bayeux Tapestry, which illustrates this battle, shows that William's army was very well equipped. They had throwing spears and thrusting spears and swords and those big wooden leather kite-shaped shields. So you've both got mounted cavalry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two, uh, Rachel on two the two left long. and on the right. Yeah, on the right I get the impression you're the boss, Jim. It's a bit like being at work, I guess. OK, fine, fair enough. <laughs> Kip's enjoying watching the screen. He hasn't actually told anybody anything yet. No, but it looks like they're shaking out such that Andrew is going to give the orders. Rachel and Frank, we line up the swordsmen in front of the archers, a long, thin line of archers behind the swordsmen. We've got to protect them from the charge. The enemy are much more spread out. Either flank. If they were to act quickly the now, they could use their cavalry to advantage and isolate okay. them. That's right. The Norman army were really very well armoured. We they wore a sort of knee-length male shirt called a hauberk. And mail is an intricately interlinked web of iron rings, each closed with a rivet. It was immaculately tailored to fit, very painstaking process. These things were expensive, and they were worn over a, a padded coat called an Ackerton. Now, the English Huskals also wore mail shirts, only they called them beernies. But their feared men were probably less well armed because these things were so expensive. But by this stage, they probably had a few mail coats for the, amongst themselves because they would have looted them, stripped them from the bodies of the Norse uh, at, at Stamford Bridge. Is there enemy in the, uh, in the distance? So you've both got mounted cavalry, yeah? Yeah, uh, to, uh, yeah Rachel on the left long, and on the right. Yeah, on the right and left, And archers, yeah. OK. Three. I want a row of archers lined up in the front, facing towards the enemy. I want cavalry on either side of the archers. Have All the while the they're waiting and chatting, this lot are coming closer and closer together. They're losing an initiative they had. Are yeah. you glad you're not a general now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so have you sorted out what you've got? Just about, I think. Hopefully. These things can be over so quickly, you know. We've got to get into formation before we start charging. OK, so line of infantry in front, line of archers behind, horsemen either side. Most importantly, the Normans had brought their horses with them across the channel. Imagine the logistics of that. And Duke William had two magnificent yeah. black war yeah, horses, got, which were gifts from the King of Spain. Okay. Have we got the infantry? The infantry. All I say is it looks to me as though the enemy are forming up with speed, and the, the, as soon as they form up, it's going to be that much harder. Right, yeah. You can see one by one the English thanes bringing up yeah. the feared men. They're getting a shield wall going. That's right. And once, once that's a continuous shield wall, it'll have to be a harsh yeah. attack across the middle. They had that on the mobility of cavalry could have disrupted and frustrated That's right. that form up. But you see the cavalry are still advancing at the walk. Mm. Not aware of any ticking clock at all. That's right. It's very leisurely, isn't it? Yeah, they're just information gathering. They appear to be massing over on our right. They seem to be moving on our right. OK. Team, you're taking a long time to get your act together. They're not going to be hanging about waiting for you to make pretty patterns. They're going to get stuck in. We're nearly in archery range. OK, right. I want the archers to fire at will. Archers to fire at will. Are you still holding back? We're, we're walking forward. I think we're working on building a formation before we actually... But attack. they're going to build a formation as well, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. No pressure. No I'm pressure. just, you no. know, okay. trying to... Okay. I can't say I'm trying to help. Right. Kip's moved up to stand beside Andrew, but he still hasn't found a role for himself. Yes, and well, that's right. 
And Andrew's not giving him a role. No, he's Deputy Andrew for right now. Fran? Yeah? Your horsemen on the right, they're going to have to be ready to run around the side of their infantry. Hit them on the right with your infantry, with, with your horse. Yeah, yeah, get, get, your, get your horse further out to the get side. They're going to have to... The team is doing the right thing. They've got plenty of cavalry, and if they deploy them out to the flanks, they'll be in a position to get round the English. Side, horse out. Horse it from their left. Rachel, get your horses out further Hold on the, the left-hand flank. They are coming towards you. Yeah. Okay, I hope the archers are shooting. Now that unit of the team's cavalry is getting awfully close to those feared men, and oh no, that has got to hurt. Yeah, but I mean they're being very lucky there. They're getting off much more lightly than they deserve. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. The English are moving. Oh, look at those big axes coming out. There are English whose carls, and they're charging in to a disorganized group of Norman infantry. The Normans are trying to form. There's half the Norman horse there. A left flanking unit of Norman horse is just charging around the countryside trying to avoid getting him down. Right, bring our cavalry back from the left. Bring our, bring our cavalry back. Back yeah. from the left, hit them from the back. Charging towards us. Yeah, bring them back, Rage. Turn bring them, them back. around, hit them again, right through them. Okay, no, okay, no, 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 no,
They must keep cohesion. That's right, they've got to keep their own cohesion, and they've got to get up that hill and disrupt the English cohesion, and then they've got to exploit the disruption. Discipline's their watchword. More or less, yeah, that's right. That's it, your time is up. That was some fantastic scouting. Hopefully that work is going to pay dividends when the battle commences, because that's it. It is the 14th of October, 1066, all over again, only this time it's a particularly vicious grudge match, because playing the <laughs> French, about to take on the English, who've been giving the Welsh a kicking recently, is our Welsh team. Let battle commence. Bendy Gedig! <laughs> So, so okay, girls. I'm in charge of footmen. Kit's in charge of cavalry. Cavalry. Okay. So Rachel, I want your infantry, the swordsmen, in the front in a line. So I'm glad to see they've taken the advice of splitting the command between infantry and cavalry. Fran and Rachel, both sets of archers in a thin line behind them. How confident are you that you know okay. roughly where the enemy are? Do you have, are you confident in your scouting? Cavalry, do the same, move them out yeah. slightly right. I think I've reached my idea. My colleague Just Kip has actually in line hand the over the whole enemy army. He spent um, a lot of time looking at it. a lot of time, so, so I think it's fairly accurate. You can see the English in action there, doing absolutely nothing and doing it very well. What the English have to do is stand patiently at the top of that hill. If the English can be tempted to disrupt their own formation, it will be a tremendous advantage for the French, for the Normans. So, what's your plan? We're gonna, we're moving them forward. We're hoping these will come down the hill a little bit and take us on. So are you inviting them down to fight you now? That's Captain, right, yes. I want to let's see get moving. somebody up there to take them on. Move you go. those archers. You see the, ar ar the forward archers that are in the middle there? Move them slightly right onto a slight hillock. The archers are behind now the infantry. Over on the right, front, your cavalry, move them forward in line with the rest of the troops. Just remember what Harold was doing to the Welsh. Get him. Yeah. No, just, you know. Oh, they've created a godless stramash. You can see that's the Norman army out there, and it's milling about trying to form a broadly linear formation across the field. Row of spearmen, row of archers, then row of swordsmen at the front. At the Rachel. Front. Okay. Cavalry. Let's start the infantry the forward. Body. Just past the main body. Sort of William the taking his time. And cavalry on yours. Move them just William past the, the main body on the right. You see that they're trying to form a big line. And what that means they're doing is they are spreading their combat power thinly, like margarine on bread. And what I'm not seeing the team developing here is a concentration of combat power. They haven't yet formed a fist the that they can arm. use to strike. They're not oh, describing strike, yeah. the application of a concentration of strength to strike yeah. the enemy. Want, uh, let's get the infantry going now. We're now going to start let the fight. Yes, go. that's a good thing. Go. I don't want to interfere with your planning. I just like the fight bit. Andrew, archers to follow. Archers to follow archers all to follow. times. Archers, fire at will. Was your plan to bore them to death, maybe? I'm, I'm just wondering, until they all ran away and did something else. They will fire when they're in range. That's great, OK. It's characteristic of this period of warfare that most battles started with probing missile attacks, fighting from a distance, trying to find the weak spots in the enemy line. They can use their archers to probe. They can bring spearmen up to probe, throwing things at each other. We look at the bio tapestry, the early stage of the battle, everyone's throwing stuff at each other. Rachel, cavalry, hit them on the left. OK. Let's think the all those Englishmen sitting there the saying, left. come on, bring it on, Frenchies. Cavalry on the right. Fran, hit him on the right. Yeah. So you hit him, turn back. Hit yeah, him no, on the left. No, no, do you, you want to do that, though, do we? Do you want to do a frontal attack for the cavalry? Oh, We're not no, doing no, no, that. No, no, no. no stop. Sit. OK, Rachel and Fran, remember the plan. The infantry charge forward. And then retreat. Do a yeah, faint infantry retreat. Infantry forward. We're trying to draw Fran, them down stop the cavalry. Stop the cavalry. Stop that cavalry. Stop. I like it when Kip's getting cross. It's, it's quite scary. Kind of good general work, that is. I'll discipline them. Right, oh, don't, don't, don't take my mind off it. I'm, I'm in the I'm in focused man. Right, bring my cavalry up behind all these now. Stop! Stop the cavalry, Rachel! OK. What, completely stop them? Yeah, is that, is that cavalry? Are you sure? No, 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 no. The didn't see them then. Got them mixed up. Sorry, no, right. sorry. Hold your cavalry, Rach. Hold cavalry. Look at this, the Normans, the team, are sending in some infantry, and they've just been advancing in rushes. They run, stop and reform, run, stop and reform. 
Hope they can keep that up up that long slope of a hill. But it looks like they're starting to move their combat power up the hill. But look how spread out it is. OK, stop the infantry. I'm not going to tell them this. Stop the infantry. But they're actually doing really stop the very infantry. well indeed. Yeah, it looks to me like the team are actually doing it. They're doing the right thing. They're probing the English, trying to goad them, trying to get them to break ranks and chase them. Exactly what they should be doing. OK, yeah, archers fire. Infantry, back, back off, infantry, back off. We want to try and draw them down the hill. They do need to be careful in the speed of the advance of their infantry. That, that's a tiring hill that they're wearing. Male armour, helmet, swords. Yeah, let's... They have to fight when they get to the top of the hill. English archers are firing on you. Bring them back now. Do you want to bring them back? Yeah, 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 bring them back. They should all be in one line. Cavalry on the left. Right, I'm going to start supporting the English. I've just decided. Cavalry on the left. Do you want me to go behind Hit them on the left. Get that cavalry. Look at those English arrows. Go on. OK, just charge them up. Just get that cavalry and hit them on the left. And when you go in, come back again. I don't want you running for miles faster. Hit them and then turn. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Get in there. Right, pull them back now. Right, bring them back. Pull them back. Turn them around. Bring them back. Pull cavalry back. Ah, very good. Minimal, minimal casualties, that's fine. So the team are, are doing a feigned flight. Look at those horses running away, and the English go for it. They've fallen for it. And they're moving out, they're disrupting their own line. They've, they've lost formation there. They need to turn now! And they're standing still in front of the English line, not doing anything. They've, they've lost around. it. Wasted. Uh, and the English are able to walk back. They're back in formation, back they're sorting formation. back to their line. So completely wasted. So the team have got the right idea, disrupt the English line. Now what they need to do is try again. Learn from that. That's right, and exploit it. That is nice. They've gone in, come back out, and the English are starting to break ranks and follow them. Just what the Normans want the English to yeah, do. Yeah. Send the infantry into the hole now. Get the cavalry, cavalry to support that infantry. Cavalry! Rage off cavalry! On the, on the left! Got Will the Norman cavalry get up there before... Uh, now, are they thinning their line, or they are they opening a flank? Right, right, go for the hole. Right, want the infantry in the up there. Into the hole! Back! Right, in with the infantry! In bring your cavalry infantry. out. In with the infantry. Yeah, your cavalry in, out, in. Fran. Bring my cavalry What's happening back. in your side, Fran? And hold them. We've got a great Turn big gap around. here. Too. And wait Turn again. Wait. Don't go down the hill. Don't go down the hill. Hit them from behind. Do you want the infantry to go through the hole yeah. now? Hit take, them take them on. Once you've gone through the hole, come back from the back on them. Yes. Okay. Now, can I just tell you, this is just a brief pause. This is for your benefit. Time to marshal your right, thoughts. Right, OK. Can I just say, that is looking very good. How's it looking? Drawing them out is working. You talk to Rachel, I talk to Fran. Fran, what's going on? Quick, 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 quick. So it seems to be that Kip is instructing Rachel in how he wants his cavalry used because that worked. The tactic they just used worked, but they didn't quite exploit the advantage quick enough. So I think he's briefing her what he wants to do next time. So he knows he's onto a winner, which is good. I'm going to send my cavalry up on the left to bash right. him further Let's on. Forget his blocks out of the way. Don't They're... forget your archers. I don't think you've used them yeah, as well as you could have done. Right. Rachel's aware of the archers. Archers yeah. are going to go in there. Are right. 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 your archers within range? Yes, they're shooting. OK, Rachel, are your archers within range? Range. Are they shooting? Yeah. Are my archers in range shooting? Five seconds. Yes. yes. Back into range. Range. One of them is in range. Right in the middle. Archers into the middle. Move your. You need your cavalry, Rachel. Cavalry on the left, further on the left of that gap that we've already created. Move them in. The team are doing just what they should be doing. Yeah, they're striking, getting away, strike, getting away. They're trying to get the English to voluntarily disrupt their own formation. Now, whether they're going to do it or not, well, that we don't know. Archers, you need to be firing into the middle. Kip is using some archers to go up and, ma and make a frontal assault. I would rather see his archers supported by infantry. I'm a bit worried about that. Yeah. As part of their combined forces, the Normans used a lot of archers. Some of them had longbows, and you know, they're pretty powerful weapons. We see them shooting from the chest, which means that they can shoot on the move as, 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 as they're advancing. Look at that fine English infantry there. Marvellous. Right. Just winding them up. Right. Right. Our infantry is running away now because... Yeah, I know, yeah, because... It's all right, so retreat. They're not running away, we know that. OK, right. send the infantry where the cavalry is. My infantry cavalry. are that's running away. That's the cavalry right, right in, that's it. Bring the cavalry back out as you hit them. Yeah. Back out. Bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. That's it. That's it. William's key troops were his cavalry, and their principal weapon was the spear. 
Now you think spear, cavalry, and you think of the medieval knight and the spear tucked, locked, couched under the arm, going in as shock troops. You must not use Norman cavalry as shock troops. They had not yet been developed. How William used his cavalry was as mounted missile platforms. The spear was used as a javelin. Now, in fact, their spears had a haft almost twice this length. I've had to cut this down to fit into the studio. And what they would do is ride up to the shield wall, hurl their javelins in, and turn away. And as they turned away, now we see the beauty of the design of the distinctive Norman kite shield. The bulk of it is protecting me, but the tail is protecting the flank of the horse and deflecting anything coming at that as I make my escape. Get another weapon, come back, ride in, throw again, away. Now I'm really niggling that shield wall. I'm trying to get it to break. And if I do get it to break, I could get in with my spear. I could stab to all around me. I could take it here and try and charge you down or more likely I'm going to draw my sword and this is where the Norman cavalry can be used as contact troops. If I've broken your formation, if I've got you on the run, then I can get in among you. I can stab to left, hack to right, stick my sword out and chase you off the field in the rout. You've got to press well, home your advantage, the remember? The archers have run out of ammunition. Okay, in a, you, use them as hand-to-hand -hand combat, the archers. Aim for the gap. The English are advancing down the hill now. Do you want to attack them? Do you want so, what do you think? I think they're doing pretty good. I mean, in that pause, I, there, there wasn't really any dialogue between the two generals. They just uh, went there isn't, no, the communication is going out that way to the captains, but I don't think it's going across. And, and they pay a price for that because it means that the cavalry and the infantry are not working together as well as they could. So could they take the day? No, they could. I mean, that feigned retreat, they just it was, did. Well, it, it was, was the, I, hair on the back of my neck stood up. But why is it that they've now directed their attention to a completely different part of the English line? Why aren't they hammering at that thin spot? The English are filled with bloodlust. If you can get them to charge out of their own formation, that formation will lose cohesion. Exactly, like a dam breaking. A little trickle at first, and, and then the whole thing rushes out. Look at that small group of horsemen is the general. Take him out, Fran, that group there. The English line is beginning to show gaps. This could be hugely significant. Wait, Fran, wait. That it's group there is the general. That's Take it, yes. Take out all of them. Take, Take out Harold. Them. Fuck him. That's fairly emphatic. In there. there he is. There he is. Well, Get him. Well, well, Harold in the oh, room. Take him out. Kill him. Oh, Come on, Count. Yeah. No, he's still going. He's still, oh, he's still going. Kill him. Yeah. The thing is, I don't think that was Harold. It could have been uh, Leofric, could have been Gareth, one of Harold's brothers, I'd say. Yeah, but not the man himself. No, I think from his position in the line, I don't think that's where he'd be. I could get, if they had them, tanks through that gap in the middle. There is a know, big hole. They've got a huge hole in the middle. Send the cavalry in there. No, 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 no. The cavalry charge the archers up the top of the hill. Rachel, what's happening on your side? And now what we're seeing is we're starting to see the English regroup. They're getting back formation further up the hill where it's less wide. They're going to get another shield wall. They are letting the English reform. They are going to lose this. OK, you have a brief pause. Let's keep that communication going. Remember, there is an English attack taking place at the moment. Okay. And what's going on on your side? If the team doesn't pull back, if they allow their army to be worn down by continuing to try to smash the English army, they may not have enough of an army left to go on and rule England. Because that's the other thing they have to bear in mind. What happens next? Ten seconds, and you're back into battle. And that infantry down there. Are you happy on the left-hand side? Them up as much as you can now, so they all support one another. Yeah, go to the archers because otherwise. Well, better make your mind up. So here we go into the final phase. The English have really regained that hill and remain relatively strong with their shield wall. They've kept their cohesion. Yeah, and to stand any chance of victory, the team must break through that English line. What is your plan now, Kip? We're going to get round the back of them and we're going to try and take out their commander. You've lost a lot of numbers, you know. You've taken some heavy casualties. Sorry? Well, I think that we can get there and we can hit that because we're moving our other troops right. to the right as well. Yeah, OK, there they go. Cavalry. There they go. The right thing to do. Nice concentration of combat power, the decisive arm, the arm of decision of the Norman army, and they're going right into the English flank there. That's great, that's good, and that's good. Stop it. I cavalry on the, on the left is running away. 
Where, where's that oh, cavalry on the left, Rach? Where are these people going? Another group of Norman horse charging. They're the... off to the pub. They're leaving the battlefield. They've, there's obviously half a dozen stragglers, and they've gone running off. They're chasing after. after them. Where's that cavalry going? The cavalry were running the wrong direction. So is your cavalry running away? No, they're gone, yeah. Well, cowards. They're, 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 they're. Can you come round to help Fran, who's up? Right, go Try and go around. behind all those English troops. The cavalry that were running away had been left standing around. Harold's men had got stuck in and they'd thought, not surprisingly, and legged it. They're not very happy about it. No, not straight up, no, straight up. This straight battle is completely fragmented, and that's just what the team can't afford to happen. Have you got any infantry left or archers who aren't fighting? A lot of infantry left. That's all I've got left. The team are losing it. They've lost all momentum, and the ferocity of the English is driving them back. OK, can the you... The pause did them no good. No. They didn't take advantage of the pause to sort out their vision for how they were going to win from this time on. They are just fighting little defensive battles all over mm. the field when they need to seize the initiative and attack. They invaded this country. They have got to fight this battle. Look. English cavalry, the dragon banner of Wessex. That is King Harold. He is showing his men he is still alive. But they should take heart, and they are going to prevail. It's just the opposite of what happened in history, of course, because his historically, William shows that he is still alive by raising up his helmet, and Harold spectacularly dies. Well, the team has not made that happen today. We're going for a pincer movement. Do you want me to attack? Do you want me to attack them from behind? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because our troops behind. are just on the other side. You are taking a bit of a hammering at the moment. Yeah. What about William? He was renowned for getting stuck in and doing stuff. Well, we knocked him off his horse. Yeah. He was. He was. A, he, he led from the front. He wants to be in there fighting. He, think yeah. of the morale. Right. Oh, then. Where, where is? Where is William? Where's Willie? Yeah. Is that yeah. in there? If you can get William in and our troops see him, will they rally? Yes, they will. There they are, they're coming. Great. Okay, get him stuck in then. There he is. Duke William is finally going in. But I'm not sure if his presence will make any difference to those routing Normans. Harold's troops are now attacking William. That cavalry will come back now. If William can fight, no, no, not, not front. Oh, no, turn him round, Frank. Turn, turn William round. I got more cavalry on top of the hill, though, guys. Back into the back. Lovely, of that'll do fine. Bring, bring them back, down. Bring them back. Hit him from the back. It's too little and most definitely too late. Oh, yeah, he's dead. It's all over. OK. Who's, is that out? Is that out? Oh, guys, you're in trouble. We you are in trouble. trouble. Right, That's no, it's why. not over. Battle's not over yeah. yet. Kip does not want to give up. He'll be on his own yeah. with his sword. No, no, no. Look at all the dead horses there. We've got dead horses, we've got dead men all over the field. And because it was important for William not only to win this battle, to take Harold out, so his claim wasn't challenged, but he needed an army to complete the conquest. Right. He had to do this with minimum casualties. The original name of the site of this battle meant Sandy Creek in Anglo-Saxon, and then the Norman-French name Senlac for the Bloody Bowl becomes the new name because of the carnage right there on that hill today. But in reality, it was English blood. Today, it's Norman blood. William the Conqueror is, I'm afraid, William the very, very dead right now. What? Willie's been killed, has he? And William bought the farm. Got nothing left. Guys, I, got nothing left. I don't think Kip will ever accept that he will still be fighting. <laughs> Captains, come on back up, please. Oh, oh dear. Exhausted. Do you know, oh, I God. really thought from the way you Good started. Good battle. Well, oh. it doesn't matter. Well done. Did our best. It was heroic. Well done. Heroic. Well done. I really thought from the way you started, it was... Ma and you know, the oh. moment for me was when you did that attack with cavalry, turned around, retreated, back, and they yeah. all drew out. It was yeah. textbook, yeah. exactly as it should have been. But you didn't have a home that advantage and get in there, yeah. I don't yeah. think. The, the infantry were further away than we realised. Yeah. Kip standing there saying, no, it's not over yet. <laughs> yes, it is. Everybody but you was dead. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But uh, a good bit of Welsh spirit there. Let's find out what the experts think. Guys, what do you think of it? You lost the Battle of Hastings. You were playing the Normans and you lost the Battle of Hastings. How could you do that? Oops. Oh, Where did they go wrong? What were the main things that they, they got wrong there? They made a great big hole in the enemy's shield wall. The English shield wall of its own free will started chasing after them, opened up a great big hole. And what did the team do about it? Nothing. 
They Aww. did the classic tactic. They created a feigned retreat and drew these guys down. Yeah. It was brilliant to watch. It was a real Fab. moment. I thought they're doing this wonderfully. They then did nothing about it. And then they had a pause to discuss that they didn't do that and didn't act on it. And you didn't have the killer instinct. You didn't operate in the route as you should. You thought that you'd killed King Harold. Yeah. Didn't they? But you hadn't. Oh. Don't take that off them. So all that excitement was over nothing. But it made you complacent. And whether it was Harold or wasn't, you shouldn't have been complacent. You should have rammed home your advantage. So show us what really happened then, what happened in the actual battle. We can show you that. I'm Norman. Call me Norman. Stand back, this can get... <laughs> in fact, it will Sorry, get missing. I've got a wonderful tactical position. I'm commanding this slope. I've got my flanks anchored by trees at either side. And I've got a nice, dense, impenetrable shield wall. This is where I live. I'm not in a hurry. What are you going to do? You get excited. I'll wait. So the English are standing between me and London. And so I'm going to move my infantry up. I'm going to do it without disrupting my own guys. And I'm going to allow my infantry to engage directly with, with the shield wall. The archers are trying to disrupt the shield wall. The infantry are trying to take advantage of it. And whenever there's an opportunity, I can bring my cavalry in and get them engaged. Now, obviously, we're not doing nothing, but we are holding shape. We're holding formation. We're having to lift our shields against your missiles. But we've got guys in the back row who are hurling javelins out of you, hurling throwing maces, hurling axes. There's a lot of stuff coming at you. If you linger there too long, you're going to take heavy casualties. You're much more exposed than we are. The Normans had a guy who was experienced at the feigned flight. Just the tactics you guys used so well. They got this guy to come up on one flank and engage the English on horseback. Risky. Easier to hit people on horseback. Big targets. The English... Well, we're still standing there, but perhaps in that engagement, a stray arrow or a javelin did get Gerth and Leofine. So this is a flank without a head, without a command. So when these guys start their planned retreat, start charging off downhill on horseback... My hot-headed guys, without command, think, wonderful, we've got them on the run. And they start running down the hill because as they do so, they start to fragment. Horse moves fast, horse turns fast. These horses turn around and take advantage of the fact that the shield wall is now disrupted. There had been a continuous wall from tree to shining tree, and there's a big hole in it now. And now is the moment when the cavalry and the best infantry start moving in and surrounding bits of the shield wall as it breaks apart. Because and this is gone, you can now get round the back. Your cavalry can come in and you can start taking us at all angles. So first by little pinpricks and then the rushing torrent, the entire English army is rendered pointless. They're not blocking the road to London anymore, and William the Bastard rides to London and starts to build a tower there to commemorate his victory. Having killed Harold. And that is how it did happen. That's how it was supposed to have been done today. But it wasn't. So, uh, <laughs> Eric and Mike, thank you very much. Team, what can I say? Well, you're lost, really, and that's it. But thank you very much for playing. Good sport. You have been watching Time Commanders. The Norman success at Hastings meant more than just one battle victory. It resulted in legal and linguistic reforms which still affect us today. The establishment of a cross-channel monarchy established a template for the bloody relations between England and France, which would last for centuries. Stay with us here on BBC Two. Ray Mears survives the Stone Age. Next.